many people say that, oh, I would, I would want to get involved with, in this climate thing, and, but I, I feel like I'm too late. But what people don't realize is that there are so incredibly few who actually are fighting for this. So if you start now, then you are one of the pioneers. It all started August 20th, 2018. Greta Thunberg, then 15 years old, skipped class to protest in front of the Swedish parliament to raise awareness about climate change. Since then, she's continued to strike on Fridays, she's delivered blunt speeches on the world stage, and she's ignited a global youth-led movement to fight climate change. We have come here to let you know that change is coming, whether you like it or not. The real power belongs to the people. That's why I'm so excited to talk to Greta to find out what's it like to start a global environmental movement and where do we go from here? I'm Lucy Biggers and this is One Small Step. On March 15th, 2019, an estimated 1.4 million young people in 123 countries joined Greta in her Friday protests. Now, every Friday around the world, students are skipping school to demand political action on climate change. What do we want? Climate justice! What do we want it now? Oh, and after turning 16 this year, she was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. Greta, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Thank you for being here. You're such an inspiration to our whole generation, and what you've been able to accomplish as one person is amazing. Thank you. Take me back to your mindset in August when you decided to protest. What was that day like? I was alone and, and it was cold. And then after a few hours, journalists started coming because I had posted on social media, I'm going on school strike and then it had become viral. So journalists started coming and people started taking photographs. And then I went home. I was happy like I had done right. what I could. And then the next day I did the same. And then after maybe an hour, someone joined me. And that was the first step, because the step from one to two is always the biggest. And once you have passed that step, you, you are not far from creating a movement. Could you have ever imagined it would have grown into what it is now? Never, no. My plan was just to sit there so that people would start talking about this, so that it would get coverage in the media. The media would write about the climate crisis and, and then it got really big. It started spreading to other Swedish cities and then to other countries and then to other continents and then it just escalated. I've seen from other interviews that you've done that the Parkland students inspired you. What was inspiring about their actions? It was just spontaneously that they thought that we can't accept this and we will do something and also that there were young people who did it and that it had such an impact. They say that tougher gun laws do not decrease gun violence. We call BS! And also their method, like school striking. That's where the idea came from. Sometimes it feels a bit meaningless. Why should we study this one if we may not have a future? And why should we bother to learn facts when facts don't matter in the society? And I also think a lot of people in our generation have climate anxiety or like depression. What is your answer to that? Because that's really real for a lot of people. I had that too before, but now I have sort of stopped having that because I, I have decided to do something about it because the me best medication against that is to, to take action. Greta's impact is truly global. We're outside City Hall in downtown Manhattan where students are protesting as part of Greta's Fridays for Future campaign. Green New Deal! Green New Deal! Are you inspired by Greta Thunberg? Yes, I've actually been in School Strike for Climate in front of the United Nations headquarters every Friday in solidarity with Greta for 34 weeks now. She's empowered so many students to come out here and strike. She's like the true, like, you can start from one person type of thing. Like, it's really cool how she did that. Well, she's a very strong activist, um, and I love the way she speaks. She's very passionate about this cause, and that's exactly what we need. What are the personal choices that you make to be more environmentally friendly? I have uh, stopped flying since a few years ago. I have become vegan. I have shop stop. 
and just small things like that that I can do. What do you want the grown-ups, the politicians, to understand? I know you've been protesting for many months now. Do you think that they've learned anything? Many people have, and many people often come up to me and say, like, oh, now, thanks to you, I've stopped flying and I've become vegan and so on. And that's very hopeful, but the awareness is still very low. People, in general, are not aware of what is going on. And uh, since they're not aware, the people in power can just continue like this if they don't have any pressure from the people. So we need to make the people aware and create international opinion. Is there any situation in which the politicians act and then you would stop protesting? Yes, I have to stop protesting Eventually? sometimes. Because I can't go on forever. <laughs> um, but hopefully it will happen soon. But I, I've said that I'm going to continue school striking until Sweden is in line with the Paris Agreement. And just personally, how do you keep going after all these months and get up and keep this movement going? I don't know. I just decide I'm going to do this and then I just do it. <laughs> but you're so brave. No, that's not courage or thing, but just determination. Is there anything that hasn't really made it out into the media that like you want to get out there that the media is missing? Many people say that, oh, I would, I would want to get involved with, in this climate thing, and, but I, I feel like I'm too late, mm -hmm. and I, I should have done this five years ago. But what people don't realize is that there are so incredibly few who actually are fighting for this. So if you start now, then you are one of the pioneers, then you are basically one of the first ones. I love that so much. That's so amazing. Greta, thank you so much. You're such an inspiration. I feel so lucky that I got to talk to Greta. She's truly the embodiment of one small step. One person sparking an entire global movement. My favorite part of the interview is when she said she turned her climate, depression, and anxiety into action, and now she feels empowered and hopeful. We all possess that same power. It truly just takes one small step, and we can be like Greta too. The one small step people can do right now to, is to, I think, to read and to try to understand the emergency of the climate and ecological crisis. Because once you fully understand that, then you know what you, what you have to do and what's required from you and to also put pressure on people in power. That's all for this week's episode of One Small Step. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please hit subscribe and we'll see you next time.